Welcome back and welcome to section two, using Hibernate persistent object to a Postgres database. So let's take a look at what we're going to learn in this section. Firstly, we need to get some data. So in order to do that, we're going to pass a JSON file into a native Java object or POJO. Next, we're going to introduce Hibernate, how it's useful for object persistence. After that, we're going to set up and connect to a Postgres database before moving on to using Hibernate to write to that Postgres database and lastly using Hibernate to read data from Postgres. Welcome to video one, parsing a JSON file into a native Java object. So in this video, we're going to take JSON file that contains information about cars and parse it into a JSON object that we can then use to persist later. So what are we going to build? Well, let's imagine we have a JSON file that contains information about various makes and models of car. Now, if we recall from the previous video, DynamoDB uses a JSON structure to store its information. And this JSON file that we're going to use is exactly the same format as that. We want to load this data into our application, ensuring it conforms to a specific format. We then want to be able to do work on each of the elements in the data set, with each element representing a car. Later, we want to store this data permanently into a database. So what do we need to build? Well, firstly, we need a class to represent a car containing the fields required to store the data from the JSON file, along with some methods to create an instance of the car class, as well as read and set fields on it. We also need a class with functionality to process JSON files and return cars, along with a main function to execute this and tie these things together. So let's go and take a look at the code. So here we have IntelliJ open, and I want you to check out the source code from the GitHub repository that's been shared with you and open the package product four. Underneath product four, you're going to see three sub packages, executor service, which we're going to use in the next video, hibernate and word count. I want you to open the hibernate one. I also want you to expand the resources directory and take a look at cars.json. So you can just double click on that to open it. Now this is the raw data file that we want to read in. And if we take a look at it, it's very, very easy to read. We have cars key and under that we have an array containing some car information now the syntax here is that each of these represents a single car and that's pretty obvious actually when you look at the data structure and for each of these we're storing a make a model a color and an engine size so you can see here we've got a red Ford fiesta with a 1.0 engine we've got a bmw bleep 3 series in blue with a 1.6 a ferrari 458 talia in red with a 4.4 a Mercedes A45 AMG in black, the 2.0 engine, etc., all the way to the bottom. And I think there's probably around 15 cars in total. Now, what we want to do is read this data file into our application in such a way that we can then do some processing on it and perhaps later store it out to a database. So, what we do with Java, we want to model each of these objects, or rather each of these cars, as a Java object. So what I've done is I've created a class called car. Now, I just want you to ignore these annotations for the moment. We're going to see what they do in just a video's time. But the key thing to look at is the fields that we've created. So if we go back to cars.json, we've got make, model, color, and engine size. And on the car class, we've also got make, model, color, and engine size. Then we've created a constructor that takes those four parameters in, make, model, color, and engine size and populates the fields on the class. And then we've got a bunch of getters and setters, each of those private fields, so we can access them. And that's it, very, very simple. And this is known as a POJO, or plain old Java object, because it really is just an object that models some data item. There's no fancy processing in here. All it is, is an object that models some data. Next, we've also created a class that can be used to read the JSON file and return us a list of cards. And this is called JSON processor. So JSON processor has a single argument constructor that takes the target file path. In this case, it's going to be cars.json as its argument and sets it as an immutable final string field on that class. And then we have one public method called parse file. And funnily enough, what that does is it reads the file and it returns us a list of cars. So we're using a JSON parser class, a JSON parser class from the org.json.simple uh, library to, to read this file. So all we do is this. We create a new parser. We use that parser with a file reader to
to read the data in that file. And that's going to return us a top level JSON object. And that JSON object will actually be cars. So we want to get that cars object. And from it, we know that we're going to have a JSON array. And that array is this array in the data structure here that contains all of the car objects. From that JSON array, we want to create a list of cars. So again, we're using some simple Java 8 functional programming here. From our JSON list, we're going to create a stream, and then we're going to collect everything back as a list of JSON objects. So now we have a list of JSON objects, and that represents this list of objects here. And lastly, we want to map those JSON objects onto car objects. So again, we stream that list, we perform a mapping function, and that mapping function takes this, each of these JSON objects here, contains make, model, color, and engine size, and instantiates a new car, a new car object. So that's this, this JSON, this Java object we created here, the Java class. We create a new instance of that, and then we take the string fields from the JSON object, make, model, color, and of course the double engine size, and pass that into the car constructor. So if it, essentially what's going to happen is each of these objects in this array, we're going to call this car constructor with these values. So what we get is a list of type car. And of course, the last thing we need to do is have a main function that ties all of that together. I'm just going to comment out the database piece here because we're going to get to that in a moment. I'm going to a break point on this line here. And you can see what we've done here is we've got the file path for our cars.json file. In fact, let's step over this line by line. If I right click and do debug, we can see what we get at each stage. So if we step over this line, file path is the actual path to the file within my working directory. Then we instantiate the JSON processor with that file path. So file path .get path. let's see what that does. And that returns the path within my working directory to that, that file. And then lastly, we parse that file to get a list of cars. So if we step over this line, we can see what we now have is a list of cars. So it's no longer a JSON object, it's a list of Java, Java objects that contains our cars information. So that's everything I wanted to show you in this video. As a brief recap, what we've done is we've taken a JSON text file that contains a list of car information and parsed it into a plain Java object. 